what's going on, man? What's going on? Man, I can't call it, man. I mean, it's it's just a good day for us, man. You know what I'm saying? We back here, part two. Part two. You know, yet again, we here to tell your story, man. And um, before I get started, really, because I didn't get to tell them much, you know, about our relationship, but you my first cousin, you know what I'm saying? So definitely. I definitely want them to know that this is definitely a family movement, you know what I'm saying? So everything that you are, you know, saying, I can just as much testify to that, you know, this man is is telling the truth about it, you feel me? So um, we're gonna jump back right in, man, because we know we, we had kind of left off with you being in prison, but I want to kind of go back a little bit and talk about a little bit about the childhood. And um, you kind of tell me how your childhood was, you know, growing up and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, man, um, you know, growing up, you know, I grew up in Spartanburg. You know what I mean? That's where I was born, that's where I was raised at. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, as far as the childhood, you know what I'm saying? I went through a lot of the same things that, you feel me, a lot of adolescents go through. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Battling a lot of the same challenges, you know, primarily being raised by my mother, you know what I'm saying, and my two brothers. Uh, I participated in a lot of sports, you know, I was an athlete, played basketball, football, you know what I'm saying, a lot of those things, you know, so, you know what I'm saying, just growing up, man, and just, you know what I mean, being the oldest of three siblings, you know what I'm saying, and wanting to be a role model and wanting to set a good example for them. You know what I mean? So that was a that was a, a major responsibility, you know what I'm saying, the minds, you know what I'm saying, just growing up. Got you, got you, man. And so of course, man, you know, you being the big brother, you know, you took on a lot of responsibility of, you know, looking after your little brothers and things like that. Um so when you was, you know, growing up yourself, were you into any kind of like sports or things like that? Yeah, I played basketball. Uh most of my years, you know what I'm saying, I played basketball all the way up in the high all the way up into high school, you know, playing high school basketball. So uh that was definitely uh sports, you know what I'm saying, always been a passion of mine. So that was a, a big part of my life, you feel what I'm saying, growing up. Got you, got you. So you played basketball? Yeah. Is that what you played? Yeah, basketball. Okay. And um I know you probably got some of that from your dad, you know, my uncle Vint. You know, he was a real athletic, you know, man coming through high school and, you know, the sparring high and all that. So, you know, how was that, you know, knowing your dad was a big sparring high, you know, player when he was coming through there and, you know, you following in his footsteps like that? Oh, yeah, and that definitely, you know what I'm saying, that was a, you know, that definitely contributed a lot to it, you know what I'm saying, just inheriting, you know what I'm saying, those athletic genes and, you know what I'm saying, being able to, you know what I'm saying, play sports and, you know, being able to be good at sports and things like that. So that was definitely something that, you know what I'm saying, I could say I took from him, you know what I'm saying? So um yeah that was that was that was definitely a major part of, you know, growing up and, and contributing to me playing sports and stuff like that. Got you, got you, got you. But man, um that's like I I kinda see a little bit more and the people can kinda see a little bit more of, you know, how it, life for you was when you were growing up, you know, leading up to, you know, the, the events that transpired to get you, you know, locked up and things like that. So just to jump back into that, and um, before I ask this question, it's not to celebrate it or anything, but do you mind sharing, like, when you was locked up and things like that, how you was moved around to different places and stuff like that, and it just kind of let the viewers know that, you know, when you get locked up, it ain't just one place you're going to be at, you know, when it comes to being, you know, locked up in federal and in the federal penitentiary and things like that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, that's one of the major differences in doing t federal time versus state time is, uh, you know, when you're doing federal time, you know what I mean, it's the possibility, you know what I'm saying, they can send you anywhere in the country, you feel what I'm saying? So, throughout the course of my bid, you know what I'm saying, unfortunately, you know, I was, you know what I mean, sent to different places, you know what I'm saying? So over the course of 13 years, which is how much time I did, you know what I mean? I did time at different facilities in different states, you know what I mean? All across the country, you know what I'm saying? So from South Carolina to North Carolina, uh, to Mississippi, 
uh, to Louisiana, Florida, you know, West Virginia. But like I said, that's that's a part of the federal system. Um, you know, they got facilities all over the country. You know what I mean? So, but like I said, basically that's up to their discretion. You know what I mean? Them being able to ship you wherever, which can also complicate things and make it difficult for you. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, you know, your visits and just maintaining, you know what I mean? That contact and things like that with your family because you know, you know, you never know where you might end up. Got you, got you. And out of all the places that you, you know, you went to throughout your bid, which one would you say was like the worst? Maybe like I say, pertaining to guards or the inmates themselves, which one would probably you say the worst one to be a part of? Uh, well, I think uh, probably one of the worst was probably would be early on in my bid. Um, is when I went to, you know, the USP, which is a high security level, you know what I'm saying? Basically, you know, a max prison, you know what I'm saying? You know, there was a lot of, you know what I'm saying? There was always constantly things to be overcame, or you know what I'm saying? A lot of, you know what I mean, intense situations and stuff like that. Uh, also West Virginia, which is a, a well-known state within the federal system, you know what I mean? That's usually a place that you don't want to go, you know what I mean? You always got to deal with, you know what I mean? The guards there um, are usually pretty disrespectful and things like that, man. So, you know, those are two places, you know what I'm saying, that I did serve my time at, you know what I mean, where it was, you know what I'm saying, rough at times, or you feel what I'm saying, the conditions wasn't always the best, and, uh, you know, the environment wasn't always the best. So uh, those were two places that, you know what I mean, I did serve. I did serve time at, you feel me, that wasn't the ideal prison. No prison is ideal, but, you know what I mean, definitely was a little worse than others. Got you, got you. Um, I know we also said about, you know, you, while you was locked up, you actually, you know, learned Spanish and things like that. Um, what facility did you learn that at? You know, learn the Spanish and things like that. Which one was it that it was like, man, I want to take this on? Uh, actually, picking up the Spanish is something I started early in my bid. Um, when I was in Florida, uh, I was at the first, you know, what I mean, prison that I went to, and it was something that I just kind of started doing uh, in my, you know, in my spare time. You know, you have so much time on your hands. Especially when you you know you're spending a lot of time on lockdown, the prison is constantly locked down, so you confined to your cell. Um, so Spanish is something that I picked up, you know what I mean. Started studying, and you know what I'm saying was able to you know what I mean communicate with a lot of you know what I mean Spanish inmates and stuff like that, man. Of that background and just communicating and being able to practice every day and studying every day, and. Um, you know, something I gravitated to, I picked it up, and then I just kind of took off with it. And over the years, I was, you know, able to perfect it. So after learning it, I'm sure it kind of helped you operate, maneuver a little bit better, and you was able to meet different people, you know, to kind of get different things done that you was trying to get done too back then, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Got you, got you, got you, man. So you then learned it, and now, uh, we're pushing to the point to where now they're wanting you to uh, teach it, or is this something that you're wanting to do? Is to teach it. So how did that come about when you you know you end up teaching it? Um, well, it came about me teaching it. Like I said, basically after I learned it, you know, it took me a couple of years. You know what I'm saying to to become fluent in it, and you know, learning to read it and write it, and uh, basically just kind of being an asset. You know what I'm saying, always being. A person, you know what I'm saying, to mediate, you know what I'm saying, whenever there was a language barrier and things like that. Right. So, you know, I just kind of became the, the go to. Hey, this guy right here, man, he can speak English and he can speak Spanish, you know what I'm saying? So, that just kind of helped put me in a position um, to be able to teach, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I never I never been the one to, to hold back knowledge. So, if I'm able to help somebody or to, to teach somebody something that I know, that they may not know or want to know, you know what I'm saying? I'm always willing to share that information with them. So I just kind of took off with it from there. And since you've been out, have you had the opportunity to like use that Spanish and stuff like that and 
be able to like connect with people or maybe conduct business or something? Have you ever been been able to use? Yeah, it? yeah, it's definitely been a major part of the networking. Um, just you know, what I mean, as far as in the workplace or you know, jobs or just you know, what I'm saying throughout the day to day life, you might come across or certain situations or scenarios or whatever where you know, what I'm saying that's a use that's a useful tool to have and uh, definitely something a great tool to have on a resume. So, you know, that's always something that when I'm telling people that, hey, listen, I'm bilingual, you know, I speak two languages, that's something that, you know what I'm saying, they always gravitate to, you know what I mean? And so it's very, very useful in that sense. And, uh, you know what I mean, something that, you know, I've been able to capitalize off of since coming home. Gotcha, gotcha, man. And just to touch a little bit more about, you know, the case itself, not to um, go too in, deep, in depth, but just kind of let us know what kind of books or things like that did you, you know, have to have to get into or read or research through to get, you know, the verdict that you actually got to get out early? Uh, well, basically, um, you know, now at this point, like I said, uh, we did have access to computers, you know what I'm saying? So we was able to research uh you know case law which is basically what governs the federal system anytime you're in a situation like i was in you know what i mean where you're appealing a sentence or whatever and you're fighting the case or you're filing an appeal you know what i mean you have to be able to have access to legal material you know what i'm saying so we had access access to the law library you know we was able to go research our cases and you know what i mean research information and things like that um so that was pretty much you know, the process was pretty much just learning the law, you know what I'm saying, and, and knowing what it is that you've been charged with and knowing what it is, you feel what I'm saying, that you're fighting. A lot of times, you know what I'm saying, unfortunately, a lot of guys in prison receive sentences or get charged with certain things, and they don't even have the full understanding of why they were charged with this or was this even, was it even legal, you know what I'm saying, for the government to charge them or to do this to them. So, you know what I mean, just that, that lack of knowledge is a, is a major thing, you know what I'm saying, amongst amongst us in prison, you feel what I'm saying, as far as having extensive sentences and the sentences being unjust, but, you know what I'm saying, individuals not knowing why it's unjust, you know what I mean, so you end up trapped in the system. Gotcha. I mean, that's, and that's a lot of people you end up getting trapped in the system and not knowing which way to go. So, you, like you say, like I said the first episode, man, you having that that will within yourself to, you know, know that you you can get out. You know, what I'm saying that you can, yet you are your difference. Even though somebody writes your story for you, you can come back and say, Nah, that's how I want it to be, and actually go ahead and follow through with it. And you had it in you, so that's a dope, dope characteristic and trait to have, man, about yourself. And you, you didn't get out the first time you went for an appeal, correct? Correct. So what was that process like? How many times did you have to actually have to go back and forth to trial, you know, doing your appeals and things like that? What was that process like? Um, well, actually, the first time, the first time I went back, uh, I didn't get out. Um, I actually went back, actually had a new trial or whatever and um i didn't get out um i did get my sentence reduced at that time um from 60 years to 25 years you know what i mean and that was a that was a rough period because at the time when i did go back to court i was expecting to be released or i thought i would be released you know what i mean or had a sentence reduced all the way down to be able to come home unfortunately i wasn't so, you know, that was just a moment where I had to, you know what I mean, continue to fight, you know what I'm saying, and continue to, you know what I mean, look for those loopholes and continue to look for, you know what I'm saying, the things in my case that I could that I could fight or find something else, you know what I mean? So, um, after that, I actually filed another motion again in 2020. Um, I filed another motion again in that year that was denied, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that was kind of like a downer, you feel me? Like, it was like, man, I'm, you know, fighting, you know what I mean? I'm doing everything right, I'm trying, you know what I mean? So it was like two times 
that I came up and, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't able to get all the way out the door. And then um, just being able to, to stay consistent, you know, being able to stay level-headed, being able to continue to research, continue to fight, um, I filed another motion, 2021, which was uh, basically due to a law change. Um, a lot of people are unfamiliar with mandatory minimums and things like that, but they actually changed the statute of the mandatory minimums uh, for the offenses that I was charged with, which allowed for me to come back again and uh, file in 2021. And um, you know what I'm saying, you know, by the grace of God, you know, I actually won that, you know what I'm saying, that motion um, and it was granted for me and I received immediate release in 2021 and uh, I was able to come home. Oh man, and where were you located when you were, you know, told that you was able to come home? Uh, at the time I was released, I was in West Virginia. Uh, yeah, I was in McDowell, West Virginia, so I actually was released from there and uh, was able to come home from there. How long was that process from finding out that you got released to actually you walking out the door uh, getting to greet your family again? Well, I received an immediate release. So the morning that I was released, I didn't even know I was actually going to be released uh, when I got the news. So like that was a big, big, big surprise, man. Like that was just like the biggest blessing, you know what I'm saying? in disguise for real but uh the actual process being that i was it had received immediate release um they only had a few hours man you know to you know what i mean to to let me go or whatever so once hearing that news you know that morning um i actually you know what i'm saying find myself you know a free man walking out the gates probably four or five o'clock that afternoon man so the process definitely you know what i'm saying was expedited you know what i mean and, and that was a blessing and what has, you know, life been like? Because I know, like you said, it, it was a blessing. And for me, you know, you coming home and things like that, it has, it seemed like our family then started to come together. Because, you know, when you was, you know, had been locked up, our grandfather passed. So, you know, we were just trying to stay together. But when you came home, it was another reason for us to kind of get excited again and be happy again. And so I was going to ask you, what was life like for you getting out of things like that? Uh, it was a transition. Um, like I said, after doing 13 years, being incarcerated for 13 years, you know, it's a different world when you're behind the wall. You know, it's a different mentality. You know what I'm saying? Everybody think different. Uh, you know, everybody move different. So just transitioning from prison into society, you know what I'm saying, it can be difficult at times, you know what I mean? Because like I said, you have to make that adjustment. But fortunately for me, throughout my incarceration, you know what I mean, I was able to maintain those outside relationships. You know, I was able to still receive my visits, you know what I mean? Family and friends still, you know, travel to come visit me. You know, I still had people I could pick up the phone and call and things like that. You know what I mean? People sent letters and sent pictures because for a lot of individuals who are incarcerated, you'd be surprised how many don't have anybody to call or they don't receive pictures or they don't receive letters or they don't go on visits. So, you know what I mean? When you fall subject to that, you know what I mean? That can put you in a, a mental state of mind of, you know what I mean? It's easy to become institutionalized. It's easy to become wrapped up, you know what I'm saying, in the things of prison, you know what I mean? You can lose track and, and lose your focus of what the ultimate goal is, which is to, you know what I mean, reform yourself and come home and get out of prison. So, like I said, fortunately for me, you know what I mean, throughout all of those years, I was able to maintain those relationships uh, with the outside, with my family, with my friends, and, and it helped make the transition from prison to home easier. Got you, man. And um, like I said, big shout outs to you know, your mom and things and the family for stepping in the gap right there at that time of your life too, man, to make sure that you you still felt that love and, you know, still felt cared for back there. And that's what was kind of helping you, you know, give you the motivation to get on out because, yeah. you know, you had people out here that was wanting you out here with them. So, right. man, that was big out, big ups to them too, man, just like, just like yourself. Um, now that you've been out and things like that, you 
Um, do you have a PO or anything like that, parole officer that you? Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, in most situations, you know, if you once you get sentenced, you know, what I mean, you'll also be sentenced to supervised release or probation or whatever you want to call it. You know, what I mean, time that that you'll have to serve after um, you release. You know, time you have to report or you know what I'm saying, check in and things like that. So, you know, I did receive that as well um, a period of time after my incarceration, you know what I mean? But like I said, that just comes with, you know, making sure that you're maintaining your employment, right. you know what I mean? You're passing your drug tests, drug screenings and things like that. And um, like I said, I've been released now two and a half years and actually moving, you know what I mean, for early termination. So, you know, we're actually looking to get that done here soon, you know what I mean? So, but uh, yeah, that's definitely a part of the, you know what I'm saying, a part of the process of being released and, you know what I'm saying, kind of post-incarceration, you know what I mean, transitioning from, you know what I mean, prison to back into society. Gotcha, 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 man. And like you say, that transition from prison back into society those few years, You've actually, you know, been working and things like that, and you know, then got your own spot hell, a couple of times now. So, um, talk a little bit about what you're doing now, you know, for yourself, you know, to make sure that you are still on that up, upward, you know, trajectory towards success and towards the life that you ultimately want to live. Yeah, uh, every day, man. You know, every day has its different challenges, you know. But for me, coming home, I just wanted to reestablish myself. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to be consistent. You know what I mean? And just being able to come home, being able to find employment. You know what I mean? Some of the simple things, like I said, when you're away for so long, you'll be surprised at how things have changed over time. You know what I mean? So like I said, for me, just coming home, being able to get to work, you know what I mean? Being able to find things that I'm passionate about, being able to find things that I love to involve myself in, you know what I mean? Just something as like what we're doing now, you know what I'm saying? This is this dialogue, being able to tell my story, you know, being able to hopefully that I can change somebody's life or hopefully somebody, maybe they're going the wrong way, you know what I mean? And I can just kind of give them some, you know what I'm saying, insight on to what that particular path may lead to. And if you already went down that path, you know what I'm saying, I'm hoping that my story can be something, you feel what I'm saying, that can motivate you to say, well, man, like, hey, if he did it, you know what I'm saying, I can do it as well. Got you, got you, man. And that's, that's what it's all about, man. It's all about, you know, living your life to the best of your ability. And then if you see that that can help somebody else, go ahead and making that happen, you know what I'm saying? And letting that person know that, you know, you aren't the only one that, you know, that fell down and you aren't the only one that may have went the wrong way, but you got a, cho you got a choice yourself right now to fix it, you know what I'm saying? And that's what this is ultimately about, man. And we appreciate you for coming through for part two, man, um, rapping with us again. And we look forward to having you back on here again to tell, you know, the, what you're doing as your life, you know, continues to grow and things like that. You continue to grow, your life continues to go on and you continue to meet different people and get into different endeavors and things. We just want to keep up with you. So um, this is just us, like I said, just showing us, showing our appreciation for you by, you know, allowing you to come on here, man, and tell your story. And we appreciate you for, for doing that. Yeah, and I appreciate y'all for having me, man. So I look forward to definitely sharing my story, you know what I mean, and a lot of other things that I got going on that'll be coming soon. So, you know, everybody just stay tuned in, and, you know, you're going to get more of, you know what I'm saying, what's real. You're going to get more of the real, man. Get more of the facts. Get more of these jewels, man. Like I said, you know, we just turning this into a movement, you know what I'm saying. We're trying to change lives, you know what I'm saying. We're trying to create opportunities and create platforms for people, you know what I'm saying. So that's what we're about. That's it, man. That's it. Well, we're going to close out with that, man. And thank you again, Vincent. And we'll be talking to you real soon, cuz. Man, see y'all soon, man. Stay tuned in. Yeah. Mm -hmm.